Hi, welcome to International Urban Woman. Today again we have Meena Aunty with us, and uh, I'm so excited to talk to her more about the next time in America, the next 20 decades of America from 1980s to 2000s. Uh, first of all, thank you again for having me over. In last episode, Aunty, you talked to us about parenting, about patriarchy. Uh, you talked about relationships, and you talked about careers in America in that time when there were no no. smartphones when there uh, was no computers were not like they are today so in today's episode i'm super excited to continue your journey to you again about relationships about parenting and about your career and uh, starting with parenting now that your kids were growing up and i feel today women have so many options like there are so many online things to do for kids there are so many offline there are karate classes there are kumon i would love to start with that today you asked me about my children they were growing up and yeah sure enough the first generation who came in the 60s and early 70s our children were like about like uh, either a teenagers or on their way to become a teenager i'm sure your audience will know teenagers is the worst kind of people to have around <laughs> and it is like uh, friend of mine had given this plaque to me which says grandchildren are the rewards for not strangling your teenagers <laughs> that is amazing yeah <laughs> oh see what happens like up until they become like say 12 13 12 13 around that time your children like when you tell them to do something don't do something it's always yes mommy Yes, mommy. Okay, so they are like they they you are God to them, but then all of a sudden something happens on their thirteenth birthday or twelfth birthday or thirteenth birthday, they become these people that you have no idea who they are. Right. And because of course you know they are growing up, they are getting their own opinions. So whenever you open your mouth, there is a opinion there, or a advice as to their. my friend can do this so why can't i do that and one thing i didn't realize at the time was my you know these kids they were living a double life mm-hmm. what by that what i mean is at home there is a indian atmosphere we feed them indian food we talk to them in a, in our language in those days we didn't have any uh, indian tvs in the early 80s at home so they were not exposed to the language the, to the indian culture like nowadays kids are when the we took them to india it was always like um, it was a vacation but they did not live that life hmm. so over here now they are living like a indian at home as soon as they get up early in the uh, in the morning go to school their life is totally different they are like their friends i mean they are looking at their friends like how much freedom friends have versus how much freedom they don't have yeah now they become uh, like go to high school and in the high school very first year ninth grade they are exposed to having these uh, football games the uh, football basket basketball games where schools friends friends parents teachers they go to visiting or either they have games in their schools or they go to other schools and then indian parents don't want to do that hmm. that especially my friends who had the girls they will not allow their girls to go to a game and there was a there was a lot of clash I had allowed my children to go to all these games. At the time, I did not realize there is alcohol also in involved in there. <laughs> yes. Like they are not supposed to, but you know what teenager does things that they are supposed not supposed to. And then slowly, I understood the problem with alcoholism, drugs, which was. I had no idea. Mhm. Yeah. 
that it is there in the high school until then i was like totally ignorant and i don't mean like everybody does it but it is there and it all depends on how parents take it treat it okay so like they had a uh, drug abuse treatments as soon as the you know, teachers know counselors knows so they were available yes we didn't have that many indians in louisville kentucky so there was not much competition which i see it i saw it later on and even now there is a lot but competition is between the parents <laughs> yeah more so than the kids kids are living their life they are having fun but then some ch- parents put that uh, pressure on their children and children are the ones who suffer because of that some children are strong enough to tell their parents to back off right i mean these are like may not say it in so many words but in their mm-hmm. own st- style or their own way many people asked me why my children i'm sending my children to louisville university of louisville why not outside they knew my husband is a professor or was a professor at the uofl and for us it was a fine school plus tuition was free so why not true so many of the local parents did send them to the local colleges or the universities rather because your audience should know local tuitions local college universities tuitions are cheaper and undergraduate it doesn't matter which which school you go to unless you, you are go, getting a scholarship in ivy league schools then of course that is totally different right but if you are going to send your children to out of state important is because of you here a professor a university is so good but that university is made good or well known because of a professor and that professor does not teach undergrad mm-hmm. they are graduate students so advise your children to go to university of your hometown home state and then for graduate degree go out right where they want to go where the name is like for business school if they want to continue kellogg's is there for example but so that's my advice to your young parents right uh, another one is like we our children got married at that time uh, and most of the kids before my son got married they married to non indian and there was a community uproar that how could they marry out of community mm-hmm. little did they realize where our children grew up or is i'm talking about like mid 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 size cities i'm not talking about new york chicago you know like big cities or west uh, san francisco california right no these are the mid mid size our children didn't have the pool of indian indians where they can meet and uh, find there was a big uproar and to the point like when uh, few kids who got married to non indian before my did uh, it was pretty bad uh, reaction like my kids will i will never let my child do this what they are doing but you know all that my my turn comes and also it also depends on the parents you when your son or daughter kids are getting out married in marrying in out of community you need to stand by your child of course they are not, not they are not children anymore they are adults but you need to stand by your children because you one needs to realize that you have raised your son or daughter and they have good uh, you know they can think for themselves i mean that's how we raise them and they know what is good and what is bad for them and if they didn't it is their mistake and consequences good or bad they are the ones who are going to suffer you cannot live their life anymore right or, or make their choices for them yes 
बिकॉज आइदर वे यू नो इट कम्स इवेंचुअली इट इज देयर लाइफ वंस एज अ पेरेंट यू एक्सेप्ट दैट एंड देन हैव ए ओपन रिलेशनशिप चिल्ड्रन कम होम if they are in trouble if they are then you go keep going to their home <laughs> when in my <invited. laughs> <laughs> uh also it is very important uh to when you get married outside the community to make your your son in law or daughter in law be a part of your family and it's not like they there have been instances where the kids got married outside the community parents did not want anything to do with them they they disowned them but as soon as the grand kids were born i mean it was like back to natural normal uh huh yes I, so my thing is like why wait until you have grandchildren wait i mean continue having a good relationship you become a part of their life they will you know you do become a part of their life true so later on after my sons got married i mean there have been so many marriages main reason for these parents to have objection was marriages between indians and non indians uh, usually end up in uh, divorce then i'm not a professional but i did my own research amongst my friends people i know and all that and Yeah, it turned out to be fifty-fifty. Indian Indian marriages failed, and American Indian I mean, Indians and non-Indians marriages failed, fifty-fifty. So total, it is like fifty success and fifty success for the other side. Right. So, so it is not it is not up to you, as us as parents, who we choose for our children, whatever you know, whatever makes them happy. Mm yes. And during this time also came about about uh, gays and lesbian marriages. And it was not as uh, acceptable. Uh, it was difficult for the parents. Oh yeah, I can imagine very difficult. Today it's celebrated in Hollywood and Bollywood like Bollywood is making movies movies about it the fact that they're making gay movies and lesbians are being shown in tv series we can see how far the world has come but in that time i mean it was people could not talk about it people could not accept it so i can imagine how hard it was for the parent and for the child and in the 60s it was a sexual re- revolution because of birth control pills okay so now in the in the 80s by the time we reached 80s I have known some Indian mothers their daughters became teenagers they knew that you know what is ahead of them they put them on birth control pills mm-hmm. yes that's how people had changed over the years here in the 70s or 60s having a child out of wedlock was even in the, it's a taboo uh, in our culture as well as western culture but now it has become the norm like living together became a norm in the 80s and 90s basically 90s before marriage uh, so these are the some of the things culturally getting into our lives this is where things started changing uh, and also i think social media was a big part of it because more people started talking and learning and coming out so that was another reason Uh, to your point on the growing teenagers i i mean all the points that you mentioned uh, i totally uh, relate and and you know agree to to the fact that raising uh, teenagers they ask a lot of why is like why like my my kids are 11 and 9 and whenever i tell them something i have to explain the why to them you can't just say because i said so like tell me what you want i will try to facilitate some of it and then you facilitate some of what i want yes for some reason that big parents saying i said so you cannot do this worked in my generation we just kept quiet <laughs> and did what we said i have made a video about this as well uh, is between asian parenting and american parenting and i found that asian parenting is very authoritative american parenting is more about communication it's more about talking to your child and and letting them be 
instead of uh, pushing them to constantly do more uh, asian parenting is very comparative and it's called tiger parenting uh, uh at that point i just want to mention one thing i was a very laid back parent mother because in my mind it was like apple does not fall too far from the tree i am okay my husband is okay so why not my child be okay if i am let them do things like what they want to do <laughs> <laughs> yes true and uh, kids uh, in terms of uh, the drug problem and the alcohol i feel that every generation has to go through it you you are growing up as a child as a teenager i remember my days you will remember your days when you kind of not a child not a adult anymore but you want to do adult things you've seen adults do it bollywood promotes it hollywood promotes it smoking drinking drugs uh, if you are upset at home if you need if your friends tell you hey do this and you will feel amazing and you're already stressed at home then you would be more willing to do try something else so knowing all of this i mean i talk to my kids very frankly about it what is what is alcohol what does it do uh, what is cigarette what does it do so they know we talk openly about it we know about the dangers and after that you educate your kids i feel you educate them uh, uh, self like self regulation tell them it's everything is in excess is bad and then not stop them and tell them it's bad don't do it and and that's that's where they'll definitely do it reverse psychology works when you tell someone not to do something they are gravitated to do more of it yeah anji thank you aunty on uh, your all your parenting tips uh, very relatable very uh, apt and i'm sure moms can learn from my next question to you is about career uh, because career is a very critical point for indian women and i would love to know your career journey where did you start what what helped you in now that you look back what helped you what were the right steps that you take that you would recommend to uh, other women uh i wanted to talk to you about um, volunteerism uh like uh, when uh, i was at home i'm getting bored and because we were going to india every year i could not have a job and so i you know in the newspaper in those days now it must be online a column called helping hand and through that i found out uh, about volunteer work very first one was in those days it was called avon products but they used to got avon lady avon lady so i was the avon lady so my job was like they would give you a they meaning the company would give you a certain area near your house and they will send you a catalog and then you drop them deliver them in the mailboxes like wherever your area was and people who will get it they will call you on the phone and you put an order and after that after i get the order i will send that order to the company and they will ship it whatever i had ordered and then my job was to uh, sort them out take then the whoever had order whatever and go there sometimes people will open their door sometimes i'll just i will call them and say this is how your your uh, order is here and this is how much the bill is so sometimes they would keep that money in the mailbox and i'll give my that their products their order and pick up the money sometimes they will be there and that's how i learned to chat not talk not talk. talk everybody know how to talk in english but chat their uh, way of speaking i don't mean accent english local english local language like it that's what i learned by talk then culture like culturally how they are mm, nice yes and uh, after that and this one was very good for me i did this for several years because this job was i could work on the weekends when we had only one car my used to husband used to take the car with him you know for his work i was stuck at home during the weekdays with my son with kids they were young and this work for me like i would do this on the weekends when my husband was home and i'll deliver all these products and you know like finish it up or sometimes when the weather was good i'll go for a walk with my kids and drop it off so that was a very convenient job and it was like a good amount of pocket money i was getting 
from there i think that that the most you gain is learning how to how things work how money man how you manage money as a woman i think that is a we'll talk more about it financial independence and learning it but uh, the chatting skill you mentioned i think that is something that is very crucial in every role right uh, otherwise hi hello how are you and then how is uh, your family and my family and the end of topic that's it you don't know what else to talk with other person i mean i didn't at the time so then the kid after that we went back to india came back here and then uh, again i'm at that uh, cross uh, road ki ab kya karu what else to do now and uh, every wednesday or thursday they will publish like helping hands at for volunteer work and i decided uh, you know i want to do it the volunteer work because i just wanted to get out of the house kyunki सुबह उठ के किड्स वेंट टू स्कूल यू डू योर हाउस होल्ड सफ स्टफ यू गेट टूगेदर फॉर समबडीज हाउस फॉर लंच बट दैट इज लाइक वंस इन वाइल देन व्हाट डू यू डू राइट एग्जैक्टली सो आई कॉल दिस पर्सन दिस वॉलंटियर सर्विसेज कॉल्ड सीनियर सिटीजन्स ईस्ट दे वॉन्ट ड्राइवर्स एंड सो आई डिट कॉल देम एंड दे यू नो दे आर मोर देन हैप्पी टू हैव मी ओवर uh my very first this uh, volunteer was for me to pick up home bound elderly and the way it work was these home bound elderly will call this organization and tell them like they need a ride to go to the doctor's office groceries uh, hair salon whatever their de- job i mean whatever they wanted to do and they in turn will call the volunteers like me and see if they are free on such and such a time such and such a day to pick up a, a person a elderly person so i had volunteer like for one sad week mhm so what my job was to i will go pick them up and take them wherever they wanted to go and by this uh, pia i came across some of the elderly ladies and my doing this for almost 20 years i came across only one man rest of them were elderly ladies because either widows most of them widows or they have outlived their family right and uh, only one man lived after his wife passed away and he was miserable uh through this i learned how to take care of yourself uh when you get old right there are a lot of services available uh, who are volunteers like who were vol- uh, who are volunteers like me but then you as a curcy need to pay not to the volunteers we are not we were not allowed to take any payment and i would not have taken it this since this is my volunteer but they pay you pay to the organization it's not much maybe 5 dollars 10 dollars but whatever you can afford not it is not free in some community people expect a free you know free services so i would take them and one lady asked me would you be my friend and i felt so sad she had no friends her our friends had already most of them had died also i learned from one elderly lady she was like 90 and she was going to college because she always wanted to be a lawyer so she was attending a law school and in her group in young one of the younger student would take her and drop her off so for a person who wants to do things lot of things just getting involved in the local community my attitude was not like my in i am indian so why should i bother uh, to you know do volunteer work in american society but if you decided you want to stay in this country you better get involved in american volunteering do anything something that and of course you know it gives you pleasure also right these days there is a website called volunteermatch.com volunteermatch.com you go on there and now i mean there are you if you want to work in hr if you want to work in finance if you want to work in marketing fundraising there are so many different functions as well where you can apply as a volunteer hospitals do it non profits do it uh, they need volunteers yeah when i was doing my volunteering 
so when friends friends found out many had questions you mean you are not getting a paid and you are doing this i said yeah that's why it is called volunteering they had no idea then somebody says that but why are you doing this <laughs> yes so the concept of volunteering was not there maybe jo jisko karna hai they all do it right but majority of people had no because in india you volunteering is like people do social work and all that but not too many people are aware that's what i think in those days i now we you know i i'm pretty sure things have changed that was one of the things and then over the years i did uh, uh, many other jobs and i feel like you know because we were going to india so often it was kind of a bliss i at the time i did not realize it but now i feel like it was a blessing because i got to do so many amazing things got to know so many amazing people and basically i love my life <laughs> <laughs> that's very good very inspiring and motivating yes kyunki ghar pe rehne se i mean jeevan kat jata hai there is no doubt but volunteering karne se it's no pressure aap aap khud ke liye kar rahe ho you doing for society you get to learn a lot you get to connect with people aapko apna cultural learning milta hai communication improve hota hai networking you make few friends as well like few long term friends as well yeah and eventually all these experiences helped me when i started my you know like my kathak uh, then i became a volunteer at the speed art museum that's again like i was a docent docent means i was a um, volunteer to give tours and i got the training over there and that also i did for like almost like 18 18 years 20 years something like that and uh, that means i would give tours to high uh, kindergarten to college students to adults so we were taught i learned how to talk about a painting a sculpture to little kids to the college students or the adults it was a learning experience and then that's when i realized pia no matter how much you learn you are never done learning there is something more to learn is always there is something more to learn ah oh, nice yeah so even at this age i am still learning it's not like i'm done <laughs> learning <laughs> there is always more <laughs> that is inspiring and that's what uh, keeps uh, a person mentally healthy as well physically mentally it it comes with lot of benefits 